Sure, doesn't hit nothing. Please. And that's why we got a rub rail. So, in case you rub into the fence a little bit. <laughs> High blood pressure in the boat shop today as Matt and Brian fitted the Discoverer on her trailer for a trip to Oasis Boatyards in St. Augustine. There, she will be fitted for the transom bracket that will support our forthcoming Yamaha outboards. She looks great riding down the road. Now let's get her ready for the water. It's been a little weird looking out in the boat shop and seeing this. We took this opportunity to get the shop straightened up and pressure wash the last 18 months of fiberglass dust and gel coat residue off of the tent and the bodega. Meanwhile, Craig and Matt took a trip to St. Augustine to check on the progress at Oasis. Oasis Boatyards has built a reputation as one of the preeminent repair and restoration facilities in Northeast Florida. Seeing the Discoverer lined up with the other boats they have at this shop is certainly an awe-inspiring shock. Some of these boats are well over 60 years old. Some of them are powered by the wind, others by inboards. But when you look around, you realize that every boat is unique. Each of them has taken on the characteristics of their captains and the crews who've built them. As we soldier on this project, we always want to keep in mind that this boat is as much a part of us as it is just a pile of fiberglass and gel coat. The shops at Oasis Boatyards are a hundred times nicer than our little hovel. We're used to scraping together enough extension cords and air hoses to get by, so it's a real shock to see how the pros operate. We learned a lot from our trip to Oasis Boatyards. Installing a transom is a challenge of geometry. The Discoverer is very flat in the bottom rear of the hull, which means that the leading edge of the transom has to be perfectly level with the bottom lip of the boat, otherwise the handling will be all screwy. Without the motors on hand, we needed to get careful measurements from a known good boat. Fortunately, the Fishing Nosara flagship Wanderer handles like a dream, so we made a quick call to the boys in Costa and had them measure the transom on the Discoverer's big sister. With our measurements in hand, John acquired the template from Stainless Marine and using a forklift and level drills, sunk four perfect holes into the transom. This bracket requires 18 bolts to securely mount to the transom. However, we asked that John only drill four so that we could drive this thing back to Jacksonville. This raised his eyebrows a little, but we're certain that of all the bolt holes on this boat, these are the ones that need to be epoxy sleeved the most. The Discoverer made it back home from her little field trip to St. Augustine safely, and Brian, Jamal, Matt, and the rest of the crew hopped in with both feet to get this thing ready for the water. When working with a hull like this, the biggest fear is that down the line, water will intrude between the fiberglass into the wood around all the bolt holes. Once that water gets into the wood, it's all over but the tears. To counter this, we use a process called epoxy sleeving. First, we drill the bolt hole to size, then we over drill it about two drill bits bigger. We drilled all the holes and took this opportunity to let the transom air out and thoroughly dry. We left heat lamps on overnight to keep the evaporation on schedule. 
Then we backfill the large hole with epoxy and let it cure. Once it's settled in, we drill the hole back to the original size and install the nut and bolt as normal. The end result is a sleeve of waterproof, impenetrable epoxy around the bolt holes. After a day to cure, we fix the epoxy sleeve into place with a very thin layer of fiberglass mat. On the reverse side of the transom, there was also a huge amount of work going on. You can see here that Brian has sanded away the spots where we plan on installing our new live well. Notice the bare spots to the left and right of the live well. This is where we will install elbows in the corner to add strength to the floor to transom connection. This same connection is a concern below decks as well. So upon John's advice, we laid up an additional five layers of woven roven to make this area of the floor really strong. Now right here, the transom is almost ready to install. The holes have been epoxy sleeved and the mating surface on the transom has been roughed up. We had to custom cut these backing plates so that they'll fit around the bolts that lay inside the stringers. We installed all 18 nuts and bolts complete with big fat fender washers and we feel confident that the transom of the Discover will be bone dry for years to come. Most recently, we received our custom fuel tanks from Sunshine Marine Tanks in South Florida. How custom can a fuel tank be, you ask? Well, on this pair of 73 gallon tanks, the model name is Craig Sutton. That's pretty custom. We acquired four pound pour foam from our pals of fiberglass coating, and this stuff is a blast to work with. Once mixed, you have about 20 seconds before your cup overflows like a volcano. We secured the fuel tanks with pour foam, but it didn't expand quite as rapidly as we thought it would. So we added a bit more around the edges to really seal up this cavity. With the transom installed and all this strengthening work finished, it was time to turn our attention to the tower. Our boys over at Showboat Custom Coatings already got this thing shined up into light new conditions. So we gotta be careful not to ding this aluminum during the install. We enlisted a few of our neighbors from the auto garage next door for some extra hands on this lift. The tower is not really heavy, but it is awkward. Everybody breathed a little easier once the bolt holes lined up and the tower was secure. They say you can't build a strong house without building a strong foundation. Now that all the structural reinforcement is complete, we're ready to hang some motors on this thing and go catch us a fish. <laughs> 